Hey everyone, Hi. and uh, we're going to look together at John chapter 5, verses 1 to 18, which was the passage that we looked at on Sunday together. And as normal, what we're going to do is we're going to read it out uh, aloud. And as uh, it's being read aloud, I'm actually going to ask Kate to read it for us uh, today. Uh, but as we're going through, put a question mark, have it open in front of you, have put a question mark in front any of any questions. questions you have, an exclamation mark for anything that, that you notice, and put an arrow next to anything that you can apply to your life. Very good. So, Kate, why don't you read this to us and yeah, have it open in front of you and mark it as we go. Okay, let's go. Chapter five. Sometime later, later, good start. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to, used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the, into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes in down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed. Can I be the Jewish leaders? Go on, go on. It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. Very good, babes. Um, but he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him. Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Right. Dan, that, that was very dramatic in places. Um, you can much. you unpack this for us now? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, as usual, I'm going to unpack and then we're going to pause throughout to uh, ask some questions. So um, really the context of this story is hope. Jesus is going up to Jerusalem for a Jewish festival. There are three big Jewish festivals, Passover, Pentecost and Purim. And each of them look back to something God had done, but also look forward to something that God that they hoped God would do for them in the future so he's on this way to celebrate hope um, but on the way he kind of takes a detour and he goes to this sheep gate uh, a pool by the sheep gate uh, this thing called Bethesda which in Aramaic is Bethesda and uh, an interesting little detail which we'll see why is surrounded by five covered colonnades now here we read there are a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame and the paralysed. And um, it's you, you can just imagine it would have been an incredibly distressing scene, kind of like going to a field hospital uh, that you, you'd just be totally overwhelmed. In fact, the word paralysed there is where we get the word zero from uh, in the English language. And so kind of that's the kind of needs there that these people are viewed as people who have nothing to contribute to society. And, um, and it's totally overwhelming. Uh, and we read that there was one there who'd been an invalid for 38 years. Like that is a long, long time. Like 38 years ago, to give you some context, 1982, Michael Jackson releases Thriller. Steven Spielberg directs E.T. E Ronald Reagan is president of America and Mahathir is prime minister here. Uh, so some things are slower to change. Um, <laughs> but 38 years ago, the Penang Bridge is started to be built. And most importantly, the first ever McDonald's opens in Malaysia across the road from church in Bukit Bintang. So, yeah, uh, it's been a long, long time. And... Um, it's just this sort of overwhelming sense of hopelessness. 
So Jesus, on his way to celebrate hope, and encounters this this kind of total hopelessness. And um, let me just see if I'll, I'll I'll put this in here. Um, you get this slightly weird thing here. If you if you follow in your Bible, you get verse three, and most Bibles now will skip verse four. And this is because some manuscripts have this first, but not the earlier and better copies. What they think happened is that an editor put a note in the margin and um, uh, and then later on it gets uh, gets moved in. But using textual criticism, you can see that it's not um, it's not in the original text, but it gives us some explanation. And the man kind of draws on this later on. He says they all of the people there, they're waiting for the moving of the waters because they believe from time to time an angel of the Lord would come down and stir the waters. And the first one into the pool after such a disturbance will be cured of whatever disease they have. So basically they're looking at these waters, hoping that these waters will bring them life. Um, and it's a sort of hope, but it's an unreliable hope because you never know when the waters will be stirred. And also it's an individual hope, because this is a hope that pits one of them against the other, because it's only the first one that gets healed. Now, there's some really interesting parallels with nowadays, like um, this place was the place where the rich and famous used to go and relax. It was very much the Thai odyssey of its day before the uh, uh, spring dried up. And so there's this sense of they go to where people used to get or have got um, healing and life in the past, which is sort of a, an image of celebrity that we kind of look at celebrities and we copy them to try and get their life but also it's a sense of like of health and obviously health is an amazing gift but when we make health our god actually an unhealthy obsession with healthiness can lead to sickness and even death um, and also the thing I saw is this is they're all staring at the pool and I'm often found staring into my phone into Instagram hoping that it the will give me phone. give me life now the reason this is important for us to think about now is in the light of the, the current uh, coronavirus pandemic, hope is key for a functioning society. And there's going to be times over the next few months where we're asked to put our hope in things that are not reliable and hope that will pit us against one another. Uh, and coronavirus is showing the perilous extremes of individualism, that we're all interconnected and we have to work together for the flourishing of everyone, especially those who are vulnerable and need extra protection. Uh, and we have to resist the false hopes that see us scrambling for the water pool to try and get in ahead of- the toilet of, rolls. Or the toilet rolls uh, <laughs> ahead of everyone else. So this leads us to our first question. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Question one, we all have blind spots, weaknesses and areas in our lives where we feel trapped. So where in the past have you seen Jesus bring freedom to you in these areas? This would be a good chance for you guys to share. I mean, uh, trying to uh, give you an example of this, like Kate and I a while back had an ongoing argument for like quite a few months, like, on and off, like yeah. just yeah, not, like, not, solid. not like solid shouting at each other for months. But um, uh, we were greatly helped by a friend who said, uh, "What you want to do in your in your conversations. conversations is seek for understanding over seeking for agreement. Because when you're seeking for agreement, you're trying to get each you're other to change. Yourself and but to actually, get if talking change. is for the purpose of understanding, you're you're actually minimizing your blind spots and they mm -hmm. shrink. And actually, as soon as we did that we found that healing and reconciliation came a lot quicker mm -hmm. um so where are those blind spots where are those weaknesses and areas in our lives and where have you seen jesus bring freedom for you in the past oh pause now oh, pause now pause now and uh, <laughs> come back when you're done great so what happens next what happens next so you've got this guy oh, yeah, some of those stories they were shared. I bet some of those stories are amazing that you share. Type them in on the side. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Up yeah. to you. Um, okay, so moving on. When Jesus saw him lying there, learned he'd been there in this condition for a long time, he says, do you want to get well? And that, I mean, that's a pretty stupid question. Well, it strikes me as a, as a stupid question, but then as you think about it, not so stupid. Yeah, because... You can cling to these things as an identity. I mean, the, the, the sort of... The best exegesis of this is actually from Monty Python's Life of Brian, where you get this uh, uh, arms for an ex-leper scene where uh, a man <laughs> comes up and asks, a beggar comes up and asks uh, this guy Brian for money and he says, arms for an ex-leper. And he's like, what do you mean an ex-leper? And he says, well, I was hopping along, minding my own business. All of a sudden, he, meaning Jesus, cures me. One minute I'm a leper with a trade, next minute my livelihood's gone. Not so much as a by your leave, you're cured, mate. And uh, 
And, and really, you know, in this day, being, being an invalid in this way was a way of life. And when he loses that, everything changes. And um, it's that question of, do you want to get well? Because when you take hold of the hope of Jesus, that hope reshapes our whole life. Also, this word well here is this sense of wholeness, health, sound, purity, wise uh, wisdom. But also, it's based on the word that means increase, greater growth and maturity. So there's this sense of growing in, are you happy just with where you are? Or do you want to change? And actually, that's a really hard question to 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 really you know are, are you happy with who you are do you want to grow are you satisfied with where you are are you satisfied with where your hope is and what's interesting is the man replies with sort of an excuse he says sir i have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while i'm trying to get in someone else goes down ahead of me so this man's problem is disability but also social exclusion but also it's his own mindset that he's now kind of sees everything as this is the way it is it's the way it's always been and it's the way it will always be it's sort of why don't you yes but like rah, and he's glorifying the problem and I, I kind of think you know it's that sort of image of where are you looking to get your life from love do you your wanna, little stick man do you, do you want to look at the waters the sort of unreliable hope or do you want to look at jesus because jesus in, in front of him uh, Spurgeon says this, a blindness has come over these people at the pool. There they were, and there was Christ who could heal them, but not a single one of them sought him. Their eyes were fixed on the water, expecting it to be troubled. They were so taken up by their own chosen way that the true way was neglected. Which I, I think, well, well, let's go into our second question here. Do we, do you want to get well? Question two, what are the barriers that you see yourself and others struggle with that prevent us from receiving wellness, wholeness, freedom? I mean, a, a simple example of this is mm. like forgiveness. You yeah. see friends break up and it's pride is the barrier because no one wants to say, I'm sorry, or no one wants to say, yeah, I'll accept your apology. So that can be a simple, uh, simple one. But there's so many others. So where do you see that in your own life and in the life of others? Pause, Pause the video. Now. I hope that was good. Um, Dan, bring it back. What's next? So what well, Jesus just ignores his question and says, get up pick up your mat and walk. And the amazing thing is he's cured and he picks up his mat and walks. And we'll come back to this bit in a bit. But what happens next is the day that this took place was the Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who'd been healed, it's the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat, which is actually fake news. It's not the law. It's their interpretation of the law that... Um, that uh, means he's forbidden to carry his mat. The irony okay. is this man's life now healed creates less work, not more work, as he can look after himself and he doesn't need other people mm. to carry him around or bring him food. So they kind of miss the point. And the man says, the man who made me well told me to pick up the mat. And what? They said, well, who is this fellow? And he doesn't know. Because Jesus, like, this is absolute amazing. This is, mm. Jesus gives us hope in complete humility because he, he walks away. He healed him and disappeared. He healed him and disappeared. Like, I can't do anything good without wanting to get... Like, I can't do the washing up without wanting Kate to go, well done. Yeah. Well done for doing what you should have done anyway. Uh, <laughs> let alone something as amazing as this. So um, Jesus disappeared. And later Jesus finds him at the temple and says to him, see you are well again, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man then goes away and tells them that it was Jesus who made it, him well. There's an interesting parallel here with chapter nine, where there's another man who's healed and it's related to water. And in that sense, that man is thrown out of the temple. But here the man sort of goes back to the Jewish leaders. And there's a there's a sense of, are you going to choose the old ways? Or are you going to choose Jesus's way of grace? There's a question going on here um, that's, that's interesting if you want to go deeper. Um, and we read, so because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. Now, the interesting thing is here, Jesus could have just healed him and said, go. That wouldn't have been breaking the Sabbath laws as interpreted them. But the thing that causes the problem is he says, pick up your mat and walk. And I was trying to work out, well, why does he want him to pick up his mat? Because obviously he doesn't need it anymore. Is it like True. a Jordan Peterson type tidy your bedroom kind of thing, like agency? Because this makes it work. And I, I think where I landed with this is really the, the hope that Jesus ha has for us which is why he says, do you want to get well, increase, growth, is, is a hope for the whole of our lives, not just uh, a part of our lives. So again, this lands in, oh, sorry there, Jesus oh. saying, um, 
stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. He, he, Jesus like, yeah, healing's great, but if you're just healed, but you don't solve the problem with your heart, then actually you, you've not got the, the real gift that Jesus has to offer us. Because I mean, mm. this man is not alive anymore. Healing and health always go. Lazarus, even Lazarus, is now dead. But um, Jesus wants to give him so much more. It's, it, and, and this isn't grace, 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 now I'm going to tell you off. Stop sinning. This is don't settle for too small a hope. Like, I've saved you. I want you to receive everything. For freedom Christ has set you free. Stand firm then. And do not again submit to a yoke of slavery, uh, as, with, as Paul later says to us. Similar to what Jesus says in a few chapters' time to the woman caught in adultery, go away and sin no more leave this life of not only want you to be healed in your legs i want you to be healed in your whole, whole life. life so there's a whole life healing a hope for the whole life but also a hope for the whole life has to be a hope for the whole world because we are created not as individuals but we're created for relationship and to be in relationship with god and with other people and the amazing thing is i think the reason i got this i didn't spot this is because when i said saw pick up his mat i thought pilates mat you know can you know <laughs> maybe he wants him to take his mat so he can keep doing stretches so that he won't end up uh, in pain again, pain again um, later. But that's not the word. There is crabaton, which is an amazing word. Crabaton, and it's basically a mattress, um, and it is is such a visual symbol. Like carrying a wow. mattress round would have been a visible sign for everyone. In fact, there's a performance artist who uh, uh, did that around her campus because mm. a, a mattress is such a such a power, it's such an intimate symbol in a way because it's, it's the thing you sleep thing. on, it's a private yeah. thing. And Jesus says, your hope isn't to be private, it's for the whole world. Uh, and so he walks around the temple carrying his mat, bumping into each oh. other with people, no social distancing there. Like, <laughs> and everyone can see that Jesus has given this man a hope. Uh, and it's a hope for the whole world, which is why it says, pick up your mat right, and, and walk. I've still not actually put the mattress back on the girl's bed. No, that we used on Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah, question three. That. So, question three, pick up your mat. Question three, how can you carry your hope for the whole world to see at this very strange time? Yeah, and I, I know some of, we've been hearing amazing stories of some of the things the Connect yeah. Groups are doing as individuals you and together awesome. to look after people who are in isolation, to serve other people. Um, but this is a key time where we get to share our hope with other people. Um, simplest one is not panic buying. and yeah. um, But uh, there's so many other things. Sharing we're hearing, what we've got. Sharing what we've got. We've Ooh. been hearing so many amazing stories. So share that with one another. Put that in the sidebar as well because we're going to be sharing all these ideas with each other so yeah. that we can spread the hope and uh, spread the love. Yay. Pause now. Hello again. So <laughs> What's next? Where this lands, just to where finish, do we land? is that um, this beautiful line that Jesus then goes and finds this guy in the temple and says to him, see you're well again, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Look at you with all your Greek. What's her... Uh, oh, yeah. Her, uh, just so you know, I, I, my Greek is terrible, but there's an amazing website called BibleHub.com. Use that. So that Absolutely problems? amazing. But the beautiful thing here is, well, well, just on a side note to explore for yourself, you could ask, does sin cause sickness? And really, um, Jesus sort of implies here that his sin has caused his sickness. And we believe in cause and effect. If you get drunk and fall over, uh, then yeah, your your sin has led Probably to your led sickness. To the, the sickness. Uh, or if you get angry and you pick a fight, yeah, your sin can cause your sickness. But again, in that parallel chapter in nine, in chapter nine, Jesus uh, is asked, why is this man blind, his sin or somebody else's? And he says, no, 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 it's for the glory of God that this man is about to be healed and so on. And so it's not always the case, but sometimes it is. So for judgment, the answer is no, but for cause and effect, it's yes. And you can explore that uh, a bit more. Yeah, it's a good um, thing to chat about. Uh, good thing, chap uh, and compare it with chapter nine because there's significant parallels. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing, just want to finish here, is later Jesus found him. And that word is this work in the Greek, not going to try and pronounce it, but it's where you get the word Eureka, that Jesus is seeking him out as the father seeks the son in the prodigal story. He, he's looking for him and he's looking for us. And when he finds us, it's like Eureka. And that English is such an understated language. Language. see you are well again that word is <laughs> behold it's wow Eureka. it's like jesus when he created you he said that was good but when he recreates you by his holy spirit he says 
wow, look at you. He's so impressed with his handiwork in, in, uh, in your life. It was quite and powerful as we were listening to you on, on the live church online um the girls the little our little baby girls were like daddy said wow and they were like wow wow <laughs> so there's echo all around our room and really that's what we want to do we want to yeah. hear jesus's wow that as he looks at you he says wow you are my beloved child with whom i'm well pleased uh, and we want to hear that and we would then want to be able to say that to other yeah, people say that to others. Uh, and so what we're going to do we're going to pray that we would see ourselves and that we would see others as jesus sees us that when he sees us, he says wow i mm. love you you are amazing because uh, actually when you start to hear that that makes all the difference and enables us to share the hope that he's given us so mm. um why don't we if you're with a group of people why don't you just lay a hand on the person uh next to you if you're by yourself you can lay a hand on yourself and kate's gonna pray for us to um uh be filled with the holy spirit yeah. and that the lord would open our eyes so we can see ourselves as we truly are mm, let's, let's pray let's, let's receive from the lord now if you want to put your hands out in front of you you can that's just what i like to do Jesus, you are so kind and so good to us. We thank you that when you look at us, you say, wow. I pray that everyone now listening to this, watching this, would sense you saying wow over them. Come Holy Spirit. We pray that in every home, in every place that these guys are meeting, we pray that your spirit would come now in power, meeting everyone where they're at. And for those who need physical healing, Lord, we pray for them now. Lord, we thank you that you came and you healed the blind, the lame mm -hmm. and the paralyzed. And we ask uh, that you would bring full healing in every part of our lives. And Lord, for anyone who's infirm at this moment, come Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, fill them up and uh, bring healing to them now, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We're going to hand you back over to Mike and V now. Have a great week and see you next Tuesday. Bye.